coming in at fifth. This movie, I don't get why this movie's this low. Uh, myself, Jacob, and Bobby all had it ranked. Um, coming in with 13 points. Uh, got a 28 score of 28% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, by critics, 91% audience view. Came out back in 2000, sorry, 1999. I didn't see it till like high school. 19.9 uh, uh, K gross in US. Uh, guys, Boondock Saints. Good action movie. Yeah, I have no idea what the uh, critics were thinking about it. I guess they thought it was just like a one note action movie, but uh, that's the reason why. Um, ninety-one percent of audience likes the movie. Uh, it, it's, it has juvenile humor of a recurring theme. It seems with the movies that we have uh, right down here, uh, critics don't seem to be as responsive to that kind of like style. But um, it's ugly at times, um, like in terms of like the the filming. But it's great. I, I loved it. I loved it. Blown the first character was very entertaining. Oh god! And like the action scenes. Pretty good action scenes, and they had some quotable lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the sequel wasn't good, like at all. But you know, yeah, we're not don't talk about the sequel. We're just... not talking about the sequel. We're talking... <laughs> just watch the first one. Uh, you could definitely tell that uh, uh, the director is inspired by Tarantino. There's definitely some Tarantino-esque mm-hmm. parts in it, which is you know just fine. Uh, Tarantino's a great director. But uh, no, I love the action. Um, I love the actors in it are good. You got Norman Reedus and um, Sean Patrick Flannery, I believe, is the other guy's name. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, there's definitely a lot of overacting from Willem Dafoe in the movie, but I think that kind of helps. I think it works. I think it works for that movie. I, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, when because when he said. It was a firefight. Like goes, it's like <laughs> he's just going for it. it he's Way all in. Top. Huh? Way over the it, top, but excellent. Yeah, beautiful. It, 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 it just works. I mean, William Defoe, great actor. Um, yeah. on the screen, kind of underrated actor. Um, really, I like the concept of it of just two guys kind of become vigilantes. Nice, kind of interesting twist at the end of what they do. Um, with one of the characters, very interesting twist. Uh, I I enjoyed it from start to finish. Their prayer, um, shepherds we may be. Um, so I I I would say very hands down, very entertaining movie. Got it. Parts I know some of the critics do uh, did talk about uh, dimwitted clunky. I did hear Tarantino clone as well as a satire self parody. That would vastly be preferable to the film's unironic endorsement of outlaw justice. Um, kind of, even at the end, it does have that part where even people are commenting on what the guys are doing themselves. Um, I've seen a lot of things about Tarantino kind of rip off, but hey, it's got a lot of cool things for it. Uh, Ian or Max, you got anything? Thank you. Oh, y'all got that one. You got it. <laughs> Have you, have, you, have you both seen the movie? Has... Seen it. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just, just check it. Just Never seen it. it. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, you have to check it out. Yep. Did make the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh. In fact, we have not talked about a movie yet I've had on the list. I've since the current as a theme in the past episode of this one. <laughs> yeah, Maybe the next one. All right, and the next one is going to be... 49% audience, uh, 49% credit score, 56% audience score. Came out in 2000. Um, grossed at 260.4 million US. Um, very, I really enjoy this movie. Um, and it has one uh, very big icon uh, for us in comedy, especially for our age growing up. Max, a movie that you ranked very highly. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, coming in at 14 Ooh. points. Ooh. Over the wall with Jim Carrey. Um, yeah, this is a Christmas classic to me. I watch it every single year without fail. He created a great character. Well, he didn't create a character, but his uh, interpretation of the Grinch is just iconic to me. He has so many quotable lines. It's almost Jim Carrey at his best. We may discuss another Jim Carrey movie that is him at his best. Um, but, I mean, this, this movie just... 
is a Christmas is a modern Christmas classic. I don't know why the uh, mm-hmm. critics go down on this one. Um, I thought Ron Howard did a fantastic job with this. And, um, you said it was what thirty nine percent and the fifty six percent. 56 audience, I, so it's not fresh either way. I really don't know what the um, criticism of this movie would be uh, f- as far as a Christmas movie is concerned. Is it a great movie? No, but this, we're in a Christmas movie. I'm not expecting it to be great. I just want it to be a Christmas movie, and this this fits the bill. It's definitely been looked uh, better as the years go on. I feel like a lot of people talk about it more finally. I remember it got like destroyed when it came out. Um, they didn't like they didn't like the adaptation of uh, the Doctor Seuss story, but you know how how many um, of Doctor Seuss adaptations actually have been like considered like great movies? I can't really think of too many, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and here's a who. Yeah, That's good. Um, but uh, you know the Grinch definitely stands out for me. Uh, Jim Carrey at his Jim Carrey esque, which helps the character a lot, honestly. Um, um, well, how many points did this get? Uh, this guy, it's got 14. Um, both oh, Matt and honest. Jacob, for it. you both put it at fourth. Yeah, I got a fourth. I'm gonna be honest, I totally forgot that I got 49%. It would have been on my list. Same. That's all your research. Well, this, is one, uh, this is one of the first one that popped in my head when we discussed this topic. It was this one and, and a few others, but I was like, because I, 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 I didn't know for sure if it was going to be below 50%, but luckily... It was. I can't remember the exact percentage. Was it like 46? It was like a shade below 50, I believe, right? No, I thought critics would have been smarter. That's on me. That's on me. Same. <laughs> Put it on my list. Do your research, fellas. Oh, Jim Some Car- people. Jim Carrey's really good at folding his face. Like, I don't know how he does yeah. that. I don't. It's no, just he's like very. very uh, well, I think he said he calls. It, I think he says like a, he says he has a rubbery face or something like that. He just stretch it all up. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Yeah. It's impressive, very impressive. No, but they they, they did the Grinch again uh, like a year or two ago, or, or maybe longer than that, and it was terrible. The um, animated one, one, yeah, the Ben that came by, it was awful. It was just boring. Yeah, yeah so, nah. I mean, it's very really impressive that they took like what is it like a thirty-minute cartoon, twenty thirty-minute cartoon, and stretched it out to uh, like an hour, and so mm-hmm. over an hour so movie kind of gave like a little bit of backstory. And honestly, usually with villains, I don't really care for a backstory. Like, you know, they'll make some stupid backstory that I don't care. And I'm like, why the heck are you doing it? I don't care. But his actually worked of the and him seeing everything. Also has some pretty good names. Um, you know, Anthony Hopkins is narrating. Uh, Christine Brinkle, Christine Baranski, uh, for those of you, uh, as well as Jeffrey Tambor. Yep. Uh, Clint Howard, Molly Shannon, you know. It's overall very enjoyable movie. I like it. Like Max said, it's a Christmas movie. It doesn't have to be the greatest thing ever, but it does have heart. It does hit like all the original from the cartoon of like all the the original cartoon, like what you want in it, and it gives you that Christmas joy that sometimes you just need. I don't, I don't need the big masterpiece, but it really just hits everything that you need it to hit. Very quotable and a lot of good one-liners as well. Yep. For sure. I thought even the child actress in that movie was better, especially when you compare it to Jake Arthur and Phantom Menace. I thought she was an Oscar winner compared to him. Uh, you're talking about uh, Taylor Bomson, whatever her name is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good. I agree. Just fine. Mm-hmm. And that little Christmas joy. All right. That was it. Uh, now we're going to our third movie. We are hopping from one Jim Carrey movie to another one. 49% on Rotten Tomatoes, 50% uh, 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 49% uh, critic score, 57% um, audience score. Uh, involved the Miami Dolphins, got appearance from Courtney Cox is in it, Dan Marino is in it, 71.2, um, 71.2, the quote, laces out, is very big, released in 1994, made $71.2 million, ladies and gentlemen. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. I mean, Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey. All right, this is another one that had um, Hunter, Bobby, and Max all voted for this. Uh, Bobby, you put it second. Max, you put it number one. Hunter put it at seven on his. I will let you all go in. 
Oh, so it's nice that number one, I let him go first. Uh, as I said before, with Jim Carrey, uh, I said the credentials of Jim Carrey had his second best. Ace from Thrush, Jim Carrey has absolute best. This is the best character Jim Carrey has ever had. I was shocked when I started doing research for this that Ace Ventura was not rated higher. I thought many or most people considered this a comedy classic. Um, like Phil said, so many iconic lines. Uh, laces out, Dan. Um, I mean, the, some people would say he has an age grow. I, I, I think has aged just fine. Um, I mean, as far as uh, Jim Carrey, Courtney Cox, Dan Marino. I mean, this movie has it all. Uh, we quote it all the time ourselves. Um, I was beyond shocked to see that um, it was rotten for both audience and um, and critics. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was shocking. And no quotable lines when he's excellent. The dolphin tank. He's the person named the trainer. One of the funniest scenes I've seen <laughs> in the Jim Carrey movie. How many points? This one got a total of twenty-three points. No, sir. I won't hold a movie made in the '90s to today's standards. That's just. Uh, yeah, yeah, people do mention stuff like that. I mean, we're not going to get into it, but yeah. Yeah, not going to get into it, but you know, it was made in, in, in this time, and I think it's still a hilarious movie. The main criticism is, like, people say it's, like, lowbrow, but, I mean, it's Jim Carrey. You know what you're getting into. I don't really understand. I don't understand the criticism for it when you know what you're going to get with Jim Carrey. Yeah, if you like Jim Carrey, this movie you had to see. And the second one is still pretty good as well. Uh, but, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I'm shocked that this was not considered a good movie by uh, the public. Yeah, no, that I I didn't even uh, look into that. I'm shocked that it, it's not like overwhelming positive on um, audience. What was it? Audience? What was it? Fifty-seven. 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 Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's kind of surprising. Because when you think of like Jim Carrey stuff, you think of like It's and Terror or like Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, I think I thought this would be one of his highest rated movies because I thought it was a comedy classic. I was wrong. I mean, you, you had Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey and just doing, having a lot of fun. I think I enjoyed this one. Honestly, this one got a lower rating than The Mask, which I enjoy The Mask, but I still think this is a better movie. Mm -hmm. I think it uh, got a little bit of a twist at the end. Um, I think a lot of people think it's bumbling, uh, no consistency. With Ace Ventura, the whole movie shifts from tone to tone of social satire to a sophomoric pranks and traditional cop show of plotting. Uh, uh, this also had a spin-off show, cartoon, yeah. with it. Uh, I don't think Jim Carrey didn't do the voice of it. No, but, I didn't. mean, I think it was Rob. Yeah, I mean, I think this was like right in that Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, like for us, especially Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler. <laughs> having their movies back to back. This was probably one of his more prime well known, especially for our age group. Have watched it again as I was older, still enjoyed it, still thought it was funny, still had the um, great uh, Jim Carreyisms, the antics of Ace, uh, Ace Ventura. I think him, the scene where uh, he's, dr how his messed up car and him driving with his head out the window always is like kind of cracks me up because once I had to do that because my windshield was messed up. Uh, um, that's all I can really say. Very good movie. I even yeah. liked the uh, sequel. I thought the sequel was good. Yeah. Sequel. Also I, I recommend you watch both of them. Yep, just know what you're getting into. Jim Carrey movie. It's the same thing as if, well, it's the same thing. You know what you're getting into if you watch an Adam Sandler, or Will Ferrell movie. No, just know what you're getting into. Not like Jim Carrey, you're not gonna like the movie. But, but mm -hmm. I would say like the, the the top three people that come to mind as a '90s kid, um, you would the comedians you would think of like Adam Sandler, Jim Carrey, and probably Robin Williams. There's probably the, the top ones. Oh, like '90s kids, you know, Robin Williams, Williams for sure. I I will say this is a oh, side yeah. note, but I will say like the Sonic movie, I never saw it, but I wanted to see it because of Jim Carrey. Like Jim Carrey was like nice. selling, he was like oh, bang backwards for that movie. <laughs> like he made it look so he's good. good. He's gonna be in the second one they're making, which I just saw. Yeah, it, it was definitely a return to form from Jim Carrey because it was him just doing, you know, Jim Carrey stuff, but it worked for Robotnik, so it worked. Oh, well, I'll definitely watch That's probably watch the that best someday. video game movie you've ever seen. I've heard that, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not a, that's not a high yeah, so bar. That's not, that's not a high bar. I'm but sure still, some people, think, would, like, some people would probably put like Detective Pikachu, maybe, but yeah. I don't know. I think the Sonic movie made more money than uh, Detective Pikachu, wow. which that's, surprised that's me. Yeah, yeah that was, if, it, if it did, that's surprising, because you would think people 
Pokemon would have been more. Um, but yeah, I believe it. Aren't they doing like a Mario movie? I'm kind of interested to see what happens with that. Animated. Mar animated Mario. Well, it would be better than the last Mario movie they made. Oh Ooh. my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, Phil, what we got next? Alright. So, coming in at number two, um, it's a movie that our generation really does enjoy. Endure. Um, it's about to have a sequel come out featuring somebody else. Um, 43% on Rotten Tomatoes, 63% uh, audience score, 43% um, critic score. Uh, it is, uh, came back, came out back in 1996. Bugs Bunny, Basketball, Space Jam. Uh, yes. Ninety point four uh, gross in um, the U.S. Yeah. I had it number one. Max, you had it number three, and Ian had it number five. So I would say one. I was really shocked this movie was kind of read this low. I get it. Is Michael Jordan the greatest, a great actor? A great one, great actor. No, but it just delivers on what it is. And I think for my childhood of having basketball as well as. And Michael Jordan was just awesome. You got Bugs Bunny. It's full. Of, it's it has its laughs. Uh, really cool tunes. Um, you got the Monstars coming in. How they steal NBA players' powers. Uh, the whole thing of Michael Jordan could be uh, taken away and having to work. Could be uh, taken away, having to work. Um, them trying to get uh, the NBA players' basketball skills back. Danny DeVito. Uh, which took me a while. It wasn't until I was older I realized Dan DeVito playing an amazing bad guy. I mean, and then, like, guys, I believe I can fly. I mean, you know, one of the most uh, very iconic songs. Yeah, yeah. Soundtrack. soundtrack was uh, was some fire. All right, so I'm gonna let you take it, Ian and Max. I'll say like this movie kind of feels like a Disney princess movie, but instead of a princess, it's Michael Jordan. Where, you, you, where, like, this is the only movie I can remember from my childhood, dude, where they blended real life with animation, and it looked, like, okay. Like, I cannot think of any other movie from my childhood that, like, blends it so well together for the time it like, came out. Roger Rabbit, but... Roger Rabbit, yeah, that'd be, like, the only but, one. Like, uh, technically, I guess it would be before our time, because I was in the yeah, 80s. Yeah, so. before, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I, I enjoyed that movie, like, like you said, I Believe I Can Fly. Uh, Bill Murray was in that movie, he's one of my favorite actors. He did a good job. It was just a fun movie. When I, I remember watching that so much when I was a kid. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I will say, uh, uh, first of all, uh, this movie features the greatest basketball player of all time. Uh, so that's always that's always a plus. Um, We're, not and, um, We're not talking just about this. <laughs> and it's just an nostalgic movie for us. Um, I would argue it's up there with greatest movie soundtracks of all time. Um yeah, I think it's just even to this day, um, like you said, Michael Jordan is not the best actor, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's bad enough to where it makes this movie bad. Um, I think because uh, what you say it was a forty-three percent from critics. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean it, it's it's not a good movie, but it's certainly um, better than the critics think. But I think it still holds a high reputation um, from uh, the general public, especially people from our era or for mm -hmm. who grew up in the nineties. They certainly hold this movie in high esteem. And um, this uh, second one, LeBron's got a lot to live up to, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. It's not only going to live up to it, it will surpass it. <laughs> we'll see. We <laughs> shall see. We'll have to see. Oh. Now, this is a movie I will say. I, I will gladly show my kids in the future this. They may not appreciate it as much as I do, but they'll have to see it. This is something I have to show them. All right, guys, it's, it's Looney Tunes. You got Bugs Bunny, you got Daffy Duck. It's, it's, yeah, Looney Tunes and Michael Jordan, especially in the 90s, what, what more can you ask for? Yeah. So, and, and you got Larry Bird, Bill Murray, um, Wayne Charles Newton, Barkley. Charles Barkley, I mean. Somehow Sean Bradley made it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, did, could they just not find another big guy? Like, you know. Really <laughs> what? Uh, David, Robinson, David Robinson, Akeem Olajuwon didn't want to do it? Oh, oh, oh. I guess not. They <laughs> were too busy winning championships during that time. Uh, I mean, I mean, Robinson wasn't winning yet. Uh, what? Nope. You kind of get. I mean, 
Granted, this wouldn't have aged well. Carl Malone, somebody, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Nah, Sean Bradley. That's uh, who that's they got. You had, because they, they, well, that character was kind of the doofus character that maybe you, like, didn't want. Like, the rest were like, yo, I didn't want to be a doofus. Oh, Probably, well, like, well done, by, the, by the time Space Jam came out, maybe people thought Sean Bradley would have been a bigger start. And I mean, he wasn't like terrible, but no, dude, yeah. They probably, man, yeah. yeah, they probably thought he would have been better. I mean, he oh, it also probably has to do with him being seven six. That probably also helped. Does help. <laughs> mm. They want to start really tall. I mean, it's kind of like they got Muggsy Bose. It's like you know, five foot three or whatever. Let's see, Muggsy. Yeah, he's five foot three. Ewing. No, it had like all the ni- all the '90s, like most of the '90s greats. Um, but uh, Larry Johnson, love Grandma Ma. <laughs> love uh, love Space Jam. Oh yeah. Any, if anybody young is watching this, watch it. Appreciate it. Uh, one of the best uh, movie soundtracks, obviously. Yep. Yep. You're allowed to well, watch it angle. after you watch this stream. Don't click away from the video. <laughs> Yeah, do that because yeah. good call, Ian. Good call. Yeah. Well, go, just go watch it. I think sometimes I have a good feeling about what number one is. I guess for me, like movies, you just want to enjoy it and have fun. Like it doesn't have to have, like I said with some of these others, it doesn't have to have this overcomplicated plot or this like the greatest act in the world. I just want to be entertained, and this brought together like two great things probably two of the two of the more popular things from the 90s especially for kids with his especially be like my campaign the jordans uh his uh jordan brand and everything and the bulls it also incorporated him coming back into the nba which was also kind of an interesting part of that of him coming back because he even has a scene at the end when he rejoins the nba um you know, Larry Bird makes a feature right in that. Bill Murray has his little running up and down and then is tired. Uh, the whole uh, <laughs> uh, part, Lola Bunny, uh, Tasman. I even, like, you guys remember the starting lineups? When they do the starting lineups, how big that is? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, got, got his kids. Well, not his actual kids, but, you know, people playing along in it playing his kids and even features Michael Jordan as a baseball player too which is always interesting and kind of features a little bit about his life though there is one critique at the beginning of the movie he says how he wants to play for UNC when he's a child that is false he actually wanted to play for NC State he grew up an NC State fan not a UNC fan just want to throw that out there just want to throw that out there you know that was a little that was wrong that was wrong no, that's because yeah, um, that's because you like David Thompson, right? Wasn't that the reason? Yeah, yeah. yeah. David, David, David Thompson, Thompson was one of his favorite players, but he wanted to go to State, but I think State didn't offer him a scholarship, and UNC oh. did or something. So, oh. um, but he grew up an NC State fan. Just throwing that out there. That that's in actually in the movie. You know, oh. you know, just do your work. And one last thing about the iconic of this movie, that scene where it has Mike Seeger stuff. Players today still reference that in their water bottles. Chris Paul in the playoffs even has Chris Secret stuff on his water bottle. It's still still highly highly referenced. So going back to our list, couple honorable mentions. We have tied these are all tied with eight points. Um Brooklyn's finest. Uh, the room. Oh Ooh. that way. The room didn't oh my goodness. Come on, people. No nope. huh. And a classic hook. Um, there's also more Todd, but there's like a bunch of movies here. So, uh, Jacob, you seem pretty adamant about The Room, so I'm going to let you go with that one. The Room is my favorite bad, well, one of my favorite bad movies. I can't remember if I had that number one. Oh, no, no. I had uh, I had the, the one that we probably all have number one, which we'll yeah. discuss is probably. But no, it's one of my favorite bad movies. What is not to love about Tommy Wiseau pretending that he's from New Orleans? Um, <laughs> it, 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 Oh god, there's just so much. I love the movie. I've seen it probably at least like five, probably close to ten times. Um, it, it's so great, very quotable. Um, uh, they even made a movie with James Franco about it. Um, it's great. Just even from like, uh, it's it's definitely so bad it's good. Um, it's kind of like a troll too, to to where you just you you unironically like the movie. 
Yeah, I definitely recommend it to anybody who hasn't seen it. It's bad. It's, it's bad, but very, very enjoyable. Ian, this was on yours and Hunter's. Huck, 29% uh, uh, credit score, 76% on score. Okay. Robin Williams playing an older Peter, coming back, Peter Pan. Uh, Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell, Dustin Hoffman as Huck. Um, you got Maggie Smith as Granny Wendy and as well as Middle Age Wendy. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not gonna I, lie, I uh, I don't really like Hook all that much. I found it boring. Same. It's, it's, it's a slow burn. Yeah, oh, but whole... because Peter Pan is very good, and yeah. doesn't happen is very good as Hook. Yeah, the whole time I remember as kids watching, I'm just like, come on, be Peter Pan already. But you know, slow build. But... I like it. It's, a, it's an interesting take of like Peter Pan growing up and then coming back to the magical land. Like, very different. Uh, I'll let you go, Ian. This is your movie. Yeah, I liked. I don't know. Like, for me, I think part of it was back then we didn't have like a Pirates of the Caribbean. And like, I was totally going through like that. Every probably boy and girl like goes through like a pirate phase. When this movie came out, it was like my pirate phase, so I was like, yo, this is sick. I like seeing Hook. It's cool seeing like a live act one of my favorite Disney movies be like live action. I've always liked Peter Pan. And so it was really cool seeing Robin Williams portray that character. Um honestly there's parts I do like forget. Like I kinda wanna rewatch this movie, but like when me and Phil worked at camp, like one thing that we used to do is bangering from that movie. When we were mm-hmm. like, so like that's like a reference from that movie I really liked. It wasn't. I thought it was like a fine movie. It definitely was slow at parts, but I enjoyed it still. Like it's Robin Williams, dude. Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah. So I honestly, the funny thing is, I didn't like this movie till I was older because mm. I think little burn it had. Um, I think I just got yeah. more enjoyment once I saw it because like I was kind of like you when I was a kid, like oh my gosh, got to Peter Pan. But, like, as I got older, I started, like, actually appreciating it a little bit more. You know, anytime Robin Williams in anything. And I think, like, the imaginary food scene, that's always a classic. Mm. Um, him, Peter, ha- Peter Pan handing the sword off at the end when he's finally leaving. And just, like, cool thing. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, underrated actor. Very, very I mean... Very great performance, everything. Um, Kathleen Kennedy was actually a producer in this, surprisingly. Ah, interesting. Mm-hmm. And Glenn Close was one of the um, male pirates. Who was? Glenn Close. Oh, yeah. Oh. Huh. I believe she played, I don't, know if, I don't know if it was Smee or not, but she was one of the pirates. Interesting. Oh, what wow. is Smee? Smee was... Um, Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but Bob uh, Hoskins. Was, uh, was a pirate in there. I believe she was the one who got it. Yeah, I'm just looking up right now. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Did not know that. All right. And then lastly, uh, sorry, now lastly, another last honorable mention. Uh, I believe this one, Jacob and Bobby both had it on their list 44%. 46% uh, audience score, 44% critic score. Came out in 2009. We saw it in theaters. Um, Brooklyn's Finest, you know? Uh, Ethan Hawke, Wesley Snipes. Richard Gere, Don Cheadle. Yep, Richard Gere, not playing in a romantic comedy. It's the, one of the few times. It's the director of Training Day and Con Fuqua. I mean, come on. I... Great cast. When we saw this in theaters, I loved it, and I was very shocked to see that it was not uh, thought ha- thought of in high regards by a lot of people. Um, I mean, like, okay, so I had Richard Gere, but it was, he was doing a role that was not a typical Richard Gere role, so um, that was very interesting to see him take a different uh, role, because you're normally not seeing him do stuff like that. Um, yeah. Ethan Hawke was all, is always, always great. Um you know, Don Cheadle as Tango. Um, you even had great supporting cast, like Michael Kenneth Williams was in it. I mean, I like that. I still like it. I've seen it, like, uh, a year or two ago, and I think it still holds up. Yeah, Ethan Hawke was so cool in that movie with that leather jacket. 
you know, I thought about starting smoking with just how cool he looked doing it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we talked about it enough. He epitomized cool, looking cool in that movie. Yeah, uh, he did. He did. I mean, that scene when he's got cigarette leather jacket walking. Look, if you probably put on a smoking ad of that when I was younger, I probably would be smoking because that dude, like, I was like, that's how cool he Man, he looks awesome. Like, it. Like, I remember um, a criticism of the movie when it, like, after it came out was, like, people said it was too similar to, like, other Antoine Fuqua movies, but I, I don't know. I, I was like, that's, that's not a bad thing, per se. No. No, it's very, I like it, very interesting. Kind of has three cops all at different careers. They're all, I think, they're never all in, I think they're never all in the same scene together. It'll be two of them, but even then it was very rare. They were yeah. all very still entertaining. Uh, like you said, Richard Greer in a really, in a role that I was shocked he was in, um, coming from what he usually plays. Uh, I got, I got. I got two two gripes uh, about all this here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, is how it? is the first in the 1990s uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie not on this list? Didn't cut it. Didn't make my list. It's, it's the best so, Ninja Turtle movie of all time. There's so many. Um, so many so bad is good. Yeah, there's so many movies that are so bad they're good. We all the list people. <laughs> and two. And, and the second thing, Jacob. I don't want to hear you say anything anymore. Wild West didn't make the cut, so I don't want to hear you complain anymore I about us like to make the cut because it's a bad movie. Oh my God. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Not a I, it is entertaining. Oh I could waste the whole hour of everybody's time just to go over why Wild West is a bad movie. <laughs> and we don't want that, so let's go ahead and do the first uh, number one on our list. All right, number one comes as no shock to us, but probably will come as shock to the people who are listening to this. A very controversial movie. Um, it had it got a very um, it got a 29 percent uh, critic score, 63 percent audience score. Granted, this is not completely accurate because we are going for a specific cut. We're going for the director's cut of this movie. It came out back in 2016. It was much anticipated. Uh, grossed out 330 million point two. 330.2 million in theaters ladies and gentlemen batman vs superman the director's cut um constantly a movie that we've all enjoyed part of dceu has faced its criticism again we're talking about the director's cut the three-hour version not the one the theater rated version. R. three hour version rated r version uh, i'm gonna let one of you guys start it off with what it was um, it was on pretty much everybody's list except for Ian and Hunter. Wow. First of all, Ian and Hunter, how dare you not put it on your list? And two, the director's cut, it pretty much closed all the uh, plot holes, most of the plot holes in the theatrical cut. Like, how do they think all those bodies in the desert Superman did it? They explain all that. And, first of all, the fight scene in the warehouse, one of the best fight scenes in the superhero movie all time. You got Batman fighting Superman, which Batman won the fight. I want to uh, state it for the record: fight. Batman won the fight. Yeah, won the fight because <laughs> Superman was not fighting. He said, "If I wanted to end this, I would have." But we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Well, that's not a conversation for now. Go on. And then when um, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor was hyping up the fight, I was getting hyped for the fight. I mean. I think all the performances did a good job. Some people didn't like um, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. I liked his new take. He wasn't playing the Lex Luthor. He was playing the son of Luthor. I liked his take. There, there are some criticisms that are valid. I do not like um, how they rush through Doomsday. Um, I thought, and I don't like the way he looked. There's like a fan. There's some fan yeah. edits of Doomsday Could where it actually bad, has yeah. like the spikes and stuff on it, where it just looks so much better. Um, you know, there's part, um, Eisenberg's Luther is, um, is interesting. It wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't as bad as people say. It wasn't, like, as bad as, you know, Jared Leto's Joker. Um, but, you know, overall, I really liked the movie, the uh, extended cut. The action scenes were fine. I definitely don't think it's a tw what, 29%, like, around 10 minutes. That's just appalling when there are so many other movies that are worse. 
Um, I just think people had a very high expectations, and it and it didn't turn out to be the way people wanted. It's kind of like what happened to Justice League until the Snyder Cut. Snyder Cut fixed almost everything about what was wrong with Justice League. Um, but no, I really, really like the movie. Max? Um, yeah, I think even the theatrical cut, um, which isn't as good as the direct cut, obviously, still was much better than the uh, Rotten Tomato score. And, I mean, it's certainly better than the Suicide Squad, which I thought was utter garbage. Um, but Suicide Squad has a higher rating of Rotten Tomatoes. Not much higher, but it is higher. Um, I think um, um, most people's opinion of this movie, um, they think it is a horrible movie, but I, I, I don't see it. Uh, I think both Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill are both underrated in their roles. I think Ben Affleck's a pretty decent Batman, and I think Henry Cavill is an excellent Superman. I don't care what people say if he, that he's wooden or whatever, but Superman is kind of a wooden character, so um, I think he has a perfect look for it. And I thought the fight scenes were in it that were pretty good. I know people have complaints about the Martha scene, but I know people will talk about that, so I'll let him do that. Um, but, I mean, there's certainly Jacob said Doomsday could have been better. Um, the look wasn't okay. great. Uh, uh, great way to whole, introduce uh, Wonder Woman. Soundtrack was, yeah, soundtrack was pretty good for the characters. The woman, one like this music they play when the characters yeah. are introduced, like Wonder Woman. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, what was it? Hans Zimmer? Did he do it? Yeah, so, um, Junkie he, XL. I thought. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, great, uh, great soundtrack. Uh, the music is the whole the whole soundtrack for Batman Superman is great. Like the Wonder Woman, uh, Lex Luthor's uh, sound part is good. That was always that's one of the best parts, honestly. I thought right. the, I thought the movie was okay. I will say, um, it, I don't know. It just wasn't really rememberable to me. But I will say, I do like. We could have a whole podcast over this. I do like DC more than Mar than Marvel. But I feel like Marvel just has like the best movies right now. I want DC to get better though because I like I like it when superheroes are more serious. You know, it's not not everything's a joke. Yeah, so I, 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 I prefer the darker tone of DC as well. Yeah, so. I hope that better movies are. It's an all right movie, but I hope really good movies come from DC. I want to disagree with you, and it's not just an all right movie. I think it's a really good movie. I want to disagree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. So uh, this is, yeah. I'm with everybody else. I rated it. It was my sec. It was second. Um, I think I had I had third. I had a third. But here's the thing with the movie for me. I will agree with certain criticisms. I will agree with the Doomsday thing. I felt that was kind of rushed. I understood you were trying to have a bad guy for all of them to team up and fight, and that was kind of just the best option because you want to go with somebody who was too powerful, who was powerful enough to kind of take on um, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman all together. Because so that kind of limits who you can use. You're not going to introduce Darkseid that early because you still got to build Darkseid up. Uh, as well as there are some stuff like Lex Luthor take. I mean, I was fine with it. I can see where some people didn't have, didn't like it with uh, Jesse Eisenberg's because I was really questioning him at first. Uh, I think his take was fine. Um, you know, there was still more transforming him into it. Now, where my disagreements are with people of why I enjoy this movie. Again, when I watch a movie, I put a lot of thought into this movie. It's same with like Man of Steel. Anybody who knows me will know I rank Man of Steel very highly. I like the realism it brought to the character. I liked it brought into the fact of what if a modern day Superman was living in our world? How would people react to them? There would be a lot of people that would see this man as a god and there would be a lot of people that would fear this man because this guy can destroy the world if he so chose to. He can walk right into the White House. I think it was a it was a uh, Batman talks about it. If he so chose to, he can walk right into the White House and say, I'm the king of America, and we couldn't do a single thing to stop him. And, like, that is how we would react to the world. That's some things that I did like about, as well, going into Man of Steel, of, like, they kind of brought it to this realism of, like, what if these people actually existed in our world? What are some things we would have with him? Another thing is I liked when it went into the conflict of, if you remember... Uh, Batman would brand people in the and they would go to jail and get like killed or beaten up badly and that really it really showed the motivation of super Superman's motivation against Batman of he saw him as this evil entity 
The thing with Batman, I think a lot of people had to get past of seeing this Batman from um, the Christopher Nolan Batman that was I Don't Kill. No, this was a Batman, especially if you've written the comics, I think for us who've read more comics or know more lore, this is an older Batman. This is after Joker has killed, um, has killed Robin. This is after he's seen a lot of stuff. And so he's in a very different state of Batman. Uh, old man Batman that just sees and he sees the dangers of Superman, which would be something that would be very much in our world of like, oh, my gosh, this guy has all this power and I am powerless to stop him. That was like the big thing. A reason I also excuse like Lex Luthor is because I feel too many people like it's kind of when people got on Superman in Man of Steel, people expected it to be the finished product. No, this is Lex Luthor, still a younger version of him, where he's becoming and turning into that Lex Luthor that we know, the very menacing Lex Luthor that we know and have seen before. That's what I kind of like, it was like, you've got to understand where they're coming from of they're turning him into that one. Because it wasn't until the end where he finally got a shaved head and you saw more of that menacing, conniving Lex Luthor you see in the comics. The Martha scene, I get it. And I think so many people have interpreted this wrong of when Superman and Batman are fighting and, uh, Mar and Superman says the name Martha. Um, this is like really me looking into this movie of like, no, Batman didn't stop fighting him because his mothers had, their mothers had the same, had, their mothers had the same name. That's not what it was. You have to think about this whole time, Batman has seen Superman as his superpowered being. He has seen him as the enemy. He has seen him as this horrible guy. Think of, like, if you really think about Batman, how many times has he probably fought people or all these criminals and had to hear their last words or whatever? And what were their last words they said to him of, please don't, or whatever? Uh, in the end, before Batman was going to kill Superman, uh, Superman doesn't beg for his life. Superman begs for him to save Martha, his mother. And uh, that's probably when the realization comes through Batman, who's a really good detective. Uh, this guy he's always seen as an enemy, he starts realizing this guy's not even concerned about me killing him. His only concern is his, is his mother. There's nothing else. And I know a lot of people, oh, they go the same name. Yeah, that was kind of part of it. But when he says, why are you saying that name? It's and uh, Lewis Lane comes over and explains it, he's now seeing, oh my gosh, one, he's probably putting together the fact that Lex Luthor set both of them up, and that two, is he really, a, he's not really a bad guy, he's begging for his mother's life. Like, it's showing him for the first time, he's seeing Superman's humanity in his world. He's not seeing him as this superpowered alien, he's seeing his humanity and seeing Superman for who he really is. And that is what is really kind of going through that scene. No, it's not that their mothers have the same name. Also, Batman probably suffers from a lot of PST, PTSD from seeing his parents killed, so the name of Martha probably does also shock him a little bit. So that was kind of with me and that whole long explanation of kind of that Martha scene, why it was like more than what people thought it was. As well, yeah. as it was a cool introduction to has the little thing with Aquaman of the Flash as well as um, Cyborg kind of shows them a little bit. Cool introduction to Wonder Woman kind of like doesn't doesn't put her at the forefront, but shows her a little bit and you get to see that character uh, kind of sets up some cool stuff. Uh, I again, I enjoyed the movie like the three hour cut. I feel the movie was also a. Uh, Assistance of Warner Bros. having too much interference and not releasing the three-hour director's cut, which I think was a lot better than the theater theatrical cut. I did enjoy the theatrical cut. I I just thought the director's cut was so much better. Went so much more into explanation. And again, like the big thing that gets me for this movie is like how it explains what if Superman really existed? How would this world? react to him the whole stuff with the government kind of being afraid of this guy you know the part where people are reaching out their arms for him when he saves that village like the like the deity and how much he's raised to a god it's just i'm like if a superman exists in our real world that is how we react that's that's that would be it people would wonder is he good is he bad is he a god or what and kind of this question i also like the kind of hints they give you to dark side and kind of all of that coming the picture up and uh, down at the ground 
um, the de- the parademon scene um, and all the other stuff it was kind of alluding to with injustice. That was a very long explanation, but you know what? I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got anything? I didn't think about that with the Marfa scene. You, you took it. You, I didn't think yeah. about that angle of it. That was really well and, explained. And another part of the Martha scene that I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Marines just to mention to it, but you see how helpless Superman was with, and that's probably how Bruce Wayne felt about his parents dying. He was helpless, so that probably also helped. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess it was like the way they uh, shot it. I, I don't know. They maybe they could have been more done to get those those points across, but you know, I I watching it. That's that's how I took it at least. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, and I like they finally like you know again. We anybody who knows this would know every one of us is huge fans of Christopher Nolan's Batman. But I love but the action scene in the warehouse was probably the best like fighting I've ever seen of Batman. It's, like he, he yeah. goes in on everybody. He yeah, goes in. Sure. Like, that is I'm whooping everybody. I don't care. <laughs> that was that was a great scene. Also, props to Ben Affleck. I know yep. had a shirtless scene because you know if you're gonna get all those, he wanted to. He was like, "Look, if I'm gonna work out, you better show me shirtless here. If I'm gonna." Absolutely. <laughs> and blame him for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so that is our list for our. Uh, so bad it was good. Top ten movies. Uh, top ten movies of all time. Our top ten movies that got low scores on Rotten Tomatoes. Again, um, just to tell you the order: number one was Batman vs Superman, uh, the director's cut. Number two was Space Jam. Number three, Ace Ventura. Number four, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Number five, Boondock Saints. Number six, Grandma's Boy. Number also tied for number six is um, Star Wars. Phantom of the Menace, uh, tied for 10th place, the four-way tie, Three Amigos, Freddy vs. Jason, A Haunted House, and Bad Boys. So thank you all for tuning in. Please, if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, uh, turn on the notifications button to the core discussions. Um, again, my name is Phil. You can also call me Legacy. You can follow me at wisdom underscore legacy. Uh, Max, go ahead. Tell them where we can find you at. You can find me on Twitter, Max underscore Derringer. Again, if you don't like Eagle stuff, you probably won't like that page, but uh, you can follow me anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Vitamin J, where can they find you at? Um, I'll probably get a, um, a Twitter shipper at one point. I'll update y'all later on that. But as of right now, they can find me on Twitch if I ever decide to stream again, which is also Vitamin J. Miller, where can they find you at? My YouTube, my YouTube channel is Ian Lesbian. If you like anime and video games, check me out. All right, and Bobby, where can they find you at? As of now, nowhere, but if I may eventually get a tour. I may eventually join the Twitter side. Yeah, this is pretty cool. All right, so thank you all for tuning in. Please share comments down below. Give us a like button. Also, give us a five-star review if you're listening on Apple's or, uh, Apple or iTunes, and you can find us anywhere with any podcast thank you guys again and ian hit that outro music No.